Hey there, I'm Lisa, a 28-year-old short film director with big dreams and an even bigger story to share. Before I dive in, please like and subscribe if you're ready for a wild ride through love, betrayal, and redemption. So picture this. I'm standing in front of a mirror, decked out in a stunning white gown, my heart racing with excitement. It's my wedding day, and I can hardly believe it's real. You look absolutely radiant, Lisa, my best friend Olivia gushes. Thanks, Liv. I still can't believe this is happening. It feels like just yesterday I met Christopher at that film festival. As I say his name, my mind wanders back to that fateful night two years ago. There I was, nervously sipping champagne at the after party, when this tall, handsome guy in a perfectly tailored suit caught my eye. Excuse me, but are you Lisa Thompson? I loved your short film, he said, flashing a million-dollar smile. From that moment, Christopher swept me off my feet. Fancy dinners, surprise weekend getaways, and always supporting my artistic endeavors. It was a whirlwind romance straight out of a movie. The wedding ceremony is a blur of happy tears and heartfelt vows. As we share our first dance, I catch sight of Frank, my mentor, raising a glass in our direction. To the happy couple, he toasts, his booming voice carrying across the reception hall. Later, as we're cutting the cake, Olivia pulls me aside. I'm so happy for you, Lisa. But are you sure about this? It all seems so fast. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. I reply, brushing off her concern. The reception flies by, and before I know it, Christopher and I are in a taxi headed to the airport. Ready for our Bali adventure, Mrs. Thompson? Christopher asks, squeezing my hand. More than ready, Mr. Thompson, I giggle, still giddy from the champagne and excitement. As we board the plane, I can't help but feel like I'm on top of the world. I've got a flourishing career, amazing friends like Olivia and Frank, and now, a husband who seems too good to be true. What are you thinking about? Christopher asks as we settle into our first-class seats. Just how perfect everything is, I reply, leaning my head on his shoulder. I can't wait to start our life together. Little did I know, that perfect life I imagined was about to come crashing down around me. But hey, that's a story for another chapter. As we take off for Bali, I'm blissfully unaware of the storm brewing on the horizon. All I can think about is the sandy beaches, romantic sunsets, and the promise of happily ever after with the man of my dreams. If only I knew then what I know now. Stepping off the plane in Bali, the humid air hits me like a wall. Christopher's hand is on my lower back, guiding me through the airport. It should feel romantic, but something's off. Isn't this exciting, babe? I chirp, trying to catch his eye. Huh? Oh yeah, great, he mumbles, barely glancing up from his phone. At the resort, our room is a paradise of silk and flowers. I twirl around, taking it all in. Look at this view, Chris. We should watch the sunset together. Maybe later. I've got some emails to catch up on. Days pass and Christopher's distance grows. Our romantic dinners are interrupted by constant phone checks. What's going on with you? I finally ask one night at the bar. Nothing, just work stuff, he slurs, clearly on his fifth cocktail. Work stuff on our honeymoon? He laughs, a bitter sound that chills me. You want to know the truth, Lisa? This whole thing, it's all a joke. My heart stops. What do you mean? Veronica, my ex. We had a bet. If I could marry someone else in two years, she'd take me back. Congrats. You're the lucky winner. The world spins. I grip the bar to steady myself. You're lying. You're drunk. Nope. Stone cold truth. Well, maybe not stone cold. He giggles at his own joke. How, how could you? Oh, come on. It's not like you're that special. Any semi-attractive girl would have done the trick. Rage boils inside me. I grab his phone, ignored protests, and find his messages. There it is. Conversations with Veronica, discussing the bet, laughing at my expense. You bastard! I scream, hurling the phone. It shatters against the wall. Hey, that was expensive! Christopher stumbles to his feet. Expensive? You want to talk about expensive? 
How about the cost of my dignity, my trust? Our entire relationship was a lie. He tries to grab my arm. Baby, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... I wrench away. Don't touch me. Don't you dare touch me. Heads are turning. I don't care. I storm out, leaving Christopher calling after me. In our room, I grab my suitcase, shoving clothes in haphazardly. Tears blur my vision. My phone rings. Olivia. Liv? My voice cracks. Lisa, what's wrong? You sound terrible. I spill everything between sobs. Olivia listens, occasionally cursing Christopher. That absolute scumbag, I'm booking you a flight home right now. No, I say, surprising myself. I need, I need time to think, to process. Okay, honey, whatever you need, just be safe, okay? I hang up and book a small local hotel. As I'm leaving, Christopher stumbles in. Lisa, please, I'm sorry. It started as a bet, but I really do love you. I look at him. This stranger I thought I knew. Save it, Christopher. I don't want your apologies. I don't want anything from you ever again. With that, I walk out, letting the door slam behind me. In the taxi to my new hotel, I watch the beautiful Bali scenery blur past. How quickly paradise can turn to hell. But I'm not about to let Christopher or his sick bet break me. Somehow, some way, I'm going to come out of this stronger. I have to. The moment I step off the plane back in the States, I feel a mix of relief and dread. My apartment, once our love nest, now feels tainted. I toss my bags aside and collapse on the couch, my mind racing. This ends now, I mutter, pulling out my laptop. Time to dig deeper into Christopher's lies. A quick search reveals Veronica works at Christopher's firm. Of course she does. I shoot a text to Olivia. Emergency wine night, my place. ASAP. An hour later, Olivia's at my door with a bottle and a determined look. Let's nail this bastard. We spend hours combing through Christopher's social media, piecing together a timeline. The evidence is damning. Check-ins, comments, inside jokes between him and Veronica throughout our entire relationship. Look at this. Olivia points to a photo from last Christmas. That's Veronica in the background at his office party. He told you he was working late that night? My phone buzzes. Another message from Christopher. Baby, please, we can work this out. I love you. I scoff and show Olivia. Yeah, right after this gem. You ungrateful bitch, I gave you everything. Block his ass, Olivia advises. I do, feeling a small sense of satisfaction. The next day, I meet Frank at our favorite coffee shop. His familiar weathered face is a comfort. Lisa, my girl, you look like hell. I manage a weak smile. Thanks, Frank. Always the charmer. I spill everything. Frank listens, his expression darkening. That low life, he growls. Lisa, listen to me. You're talented, smart, and stronger than this. Don't let his actions define you. But how? My whole life feels like a lie. Frank leans in. By doing what you do best. Make art. Channel this pain into your work. Show the world and yourself what you're made of. His words ignite a spark in me. I nod, determination replacing despair. Back home, I dive back into my investigation. Christopher's friend's social media is a goldmine of damning evidence. Comments about the bet litter their posts, some dating back to before our wedding. Dude, can't believe you're really going through with this. Two more months and you've won the Veronica sweepstakes. Bachelor party's gonna be lit. Let's send off the groom in style. Each discovery is a fresh stab to the heart. These people attended our wedding, smiled in our photos, all while knowing it was a sham. I call Olivia, my voice shaking. They all knew Liv, every single one of them. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. What can I do? I take a deep breath. Help me find a good lawyer. I'm filing for an annulment. The next week is a blur of legal consultations and paperwork. I block every mutual friend on social media, ignoring the flood of concerned messages. They had their chance to come clean. Finally, I stand outside the courthouse, annulment papers filed. A weight lifts off my shoulders. I take out my phone and delete the last of our wedding photos. This is it, I say to myself. New chapter starts now. I head to my favorite art supply store, mind already buzzing with ideas for a new project. 
Christopher and his bet tried to break me, but they only succeeded in showing me my own strength. I'm rebuilding my life on my terms, and it's going to be a masterpiece. Six months fly by in a whirlwind of sleepless nights and caffeine-fueled editing sessions. My short film, Bet on Betrayal, is my heart splayed open on screen. Every tear, every moment of rage poured into every frame. Lisa, you've outdone yourself, Frank says after the first screening. This is going to shake people. He's right. The film catches fire on the indie circuit. My phone's buzzing nonstop with festival invites and, pinch me, a major studio wanting to talk. I'm grabbing coffee when I overhear some industry types gossiping. Did you hear about that marketing exec? Christopher something totally screwed himself over. My ears perk up. Oh yeah, tried to win back his ex with some crazy bet. Married some other chick. Ex was so grossed out she blasted him online. Then get this. During all the drama, they found out he'd been embezzling from the company. Guy lost everything. I almost feel bad. Almost. At the Sundance Film Festival, I'm riding high on praise for my film when I spot her. Veronica. My stomach drops. She approaches cautiously. Lisa, I'm Veronica. I... I owe you an apology. I cross my arms, waiting. That bet with Christopher. I never thought he'd actually go through with it. It was a stupid, drunken joke. I'm so sorry you got hurt. Her words are sincere, but the pain's still raw. Thanks for telling me. I appreciate your honesty. She nods, understanding I'm not ready to forgive. As she walks away, I feel a weight lift. Their actions don't define me anymore. The award ceremony's a blur until I hear my name called. I float to the stage, clutching my trophy. This film was born from the darkest moment of my life, I begin. I'd like to thank Christopher, the audience gasps, for showing me the power of turning pain into art. As I exit to a standing ovation, I spot him. Christopher looking shabby and lost. Our eyes meet for a moment. I feel nothing but pity. After the ceremony, he approaches. Lisa, please, can we talk? I hold up a hand. No, Christopher, we have nothing left to say to each other. I turn to find Olivia and Frank beaming at me. Ready to meet those investors? Olivia grins. As we head to dinner, I can't help but marvel at the journey. Six months ago, I was shattered, betrayed by the man I thought I'd spend my life with. Now, I'm stronger than ever, with a bright future ahead. You know, I say to Frank and Olivia, in a weird way, I'm almost grateful for what happened. They look at me, confused. I laugh. Don't get me wrong, it was hell. But look where it led me. I found my voice, my strength. I'm making the films I've always dreamed of. Frank raises his glass to new beginnings and to leaving the toxic crap behind, Olivia adds. I clink my glass with theirs, feeling truly happy for the first time in months. Christopher's bet was meant to break me. Instead, it set me free. The story of Lisa's journey through betrayal and triumph has come to an end. Now, I have a question for you. If you were in Lisa's shoes, would you have confronted Christopher's friends who knew about the bet? Or would you have cut ties silently like Lisa did? There's no easy answer here. On one hand, confronting them might provide closure and hold them accountable. On the other, cutting ties completely allows for a clean break and faster healing. What would you do and why? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective could help others facing similar situations. If you enjoyed this story and want more content like this, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us create more engaging stories that explore the complexities of relationships and personal growth. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.